Feels like forever since I filmed a wrap-up video, and I guess it has because that was back in April. Hello everyone, it is Sam, and I am here today with a wrap-up video because I'm back to filming again and it's been an absolute age since I have filmed a wrap-up video. So basically today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in May and June because I took my break in June, so you guys don't know what I read in May. So, good times guys. Spoilers, it wasn't that many books. <laughs> So now I will get into the books and what I actually thought of them, which I'm sure is the portion of this video that you guys are most looking forward to. So the first book that I ended up finishing was The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Thomas Lencioni. I think that's how you say his name. I actually don't have this book on me. It's at work because I had to read this book for work. It's a nonfiction book told through kind of a fictional parable. So it's a mix of fiction and nonfiction where he's basically trying to describe the five functions of a team by showing the opposing dysfunctions. So basically trying to get people to work better as a team, to engage in healthy conflict, that kind of a thing. I ended up rating it three stars because though I enjoyed the message of the book and what it was trying to teach, the guy can't write. He cannot write fiction. He really should stick with nonfiction. So the fiction portion of it, this novel, which is basically a team of his fictional company, where they're very dysfunctional, they don't communicate well, the writing was so bad. It was so cringy. Like I felt annoyed by how bad he was writing the fictional portion of the book. But when you get to the nonfiction portion of the book where he's actually trying to um, describe and define the various functions, dysfunctions of a team, I enjoy that portion. So I, just when it comes to fiction, he's he's not the best author, but nonfiction is pretty good. So I ended up rating it three out of five stars. The next book that I finished was A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. I, again, would show this book, but I already sold it back. So <laughs> that's the thing. So this is one of the meh books for me. This is actually the second book in the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab, and it was one of the Booktube SFF Award picks. I it was one of my mad books. I just, I didn't, I wasn't into it. This series, it should not be a trilogy. It should at most be a duology. I don't understand how she's going to eke three books out of this, this series. There was a lot of filler in this book. I feel like 50% mm, of this book could have been cut out, which is why if she would have just taken the first two books, cut out all of the unnecessary filler, it would have made a decent duology. There's the first half of the book. I was like, I don't, I don't care what's going on here. I don't care. Get to the plot. And I'd be just, this quite a bit in our live show for the awards which I'll link down below if you guys missed it and are curious to check it out it was on Sam from Thoughts on Tomes channel and we all kind of felt pretty similar about this book it just felt very meh there, there, it could have been better a lot of it could have been edited down and it wasn't super invested in a lot of the characters and the characters I did like we didn't get to see a lot of one character in particular I cannot remember his name right now which is terrible but I'm terrible with names guys I'm awful was the captain of the ship that Lila was on I really liked his character I would have loved to learn more about him but unfortunately we got way too much of Lila who annoys the hell out of me and acts very immature for her age and given what she's been through like she, I feel like she should be acting more mature than she does. Then of course Kel as well who also is one of my favorite characters so I felt pretty meh about the characters, felt pretty meh about the plot. It just yeah, wasn't one some for me. So I ended up giving this book a three out of five stars. I gave the writing three out of five stars. I gave the plot two out of five stars. I gave the characters two and a half out of five stars. I gave the world building three stars for an overall rating of three stars, two and a half, three stars. I, I feel like it could have been a lot better than it was. I, it's funny because I actually like some of her other books, like the Monsters of Verity duology. I really enjoy that one, but this, this series just falls really short for me. <laughs> the next book that I finished was Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This book, however, was the exact opposite. I loved this book. It was probably my favorite book that I had to read for the booktube SFF awards. It was super, super enjoyable. I would get it out from my shelf to show you guys the beautiful cover, but you're gonna have to go with the picture because it's buried under a bunch of other books and I'm lazy. <laughs> But this book was amazing. I loved it so much. This, this season, I, I, I liked. It was okay. It was like a decent, solid four-star book for me, but this one blew me out of the water. I loved it so much. I don't want to go too much into the plot because it's a lot of spoilery content in this one, but suffice it to say that it was so good, guys. So good. We got to learn so much more about Essen. Essen? I'm not sure how you pronounce her name. Um, and the various aspects of her life as well as you got to see the perspective of her daughter in this book as well, Nassin. And I enjoyed it so much. N.K. Jemison is an amazing author. The way that she writes her stories is very interesting and I enjoy it so much. Um, yeah, I just loved it. She has a lot of diversity in her books. She has a lot of LGBTQ representation with Essen and Alabaster. And I really, 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 really enjoyed it a lot so much. I need book three right now. The way that it ends, I need to know what's going to happen. She also deals a lot with bigotry and hatred and how people internalize it and can inflict that upon 
other people and oppress them. So people who have been oppressed use what <clears throat> what they internalize from their oppressor and apply it to other people. Like she deals with a lot of heavy topics in these books, which I really enjoy, but the story itself is really fascinating and you have this like mix of magic and geology and I love it. I cannot stop gushing about it, sorry. I just really enjoyed it. So I ended up rating this book five out of five stars. I gave the writing a four and a half out of five stars. I gave her characters five out of five stars. I gave her world building five out of five stars and I gave the plot four and a half out of five stars. From an overall rating of five stars, it was definitely an excellent book and a series that I highly recommend. But I think what I like about this book the most is that she's taking the fantasy genre and making it something new and I love seeing that kind of creativity because of course you can fall into a lot of various tropes with fantasy stories but she kind of breaks out of those tropes and she's made something new and it's this weird melding of science fiction and fantasy and I just I'm very impressed by N.K. Jemisin. She has done an excellent job with this series. The next book that I picked up was Hard Boiled Wonderland by Haruki Murakami. This is my book club pick for work well, it was the one that everybody voted for. It wasn't the one that I suggested, but I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. It was my first Murakami book. I've heard that his books can be a little bit trippy to read, and it was definitely a weird book, but I found myself enjoying it. This book follows a man who works for semiotech industry. He basically takes data and scrambles it so people can't steal it. And it's a rather important job. Uh, it's definitely a very political job, though it's not necessarily a government organization, but it's it can be a dangerous job because there's a lot of, um, what's the word for it? corporate warfare going on kind of is a good way of putting it. And he gets this job from a scientist who has discovered how to stop sound. He can control sound and everybody wants this and he kind of get, becomes embroiled in the politics of the situation and kind of realizes that there's a lot more going on than he thought. It was definitely a trippy book. It had a lot of really big Matrix vibes to it, but I really enjoyed it. Murakami is definitely um, a very interesting author. Another interesting thing about this book was that none of the characters had names. They were only described. And I will say there were a few problematic elements to this book that I didn't like. For one, it was very fat phobic, like the way that the main character was describing this girl who, according to him, was overweight. It was really demoralizing and I just did not like it whatsoever. Um, yeah, I just, I was actually kind of shocked by that. I wasn't expecting that while I was reading it. It was probably the more problematic element of this book that I did not enjoy. But overall, it was definitely an interesting read and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. So I ended up giving this book three and a half out of five stars. I gave the plot three and a half out of five stars. The writing, I gave four stars. The characters, I gave three and a half out of five stars. And the world building, I would give like three and a half out of five stars. It does take place in Tokyo and kind of this alternate universe, but I felt like parts of it could have been a little bit more described. However, this was definitely more character focused. So yes, interesting book. I may pick them up again in the future. We shall see. The next book that I picked up was Talia Sinden by Stephen Lawhead, the first book in the Pendragon cycle. The book I actually really ended up enjoying. It's a King Arthur retelling, but it takes place um, before King Arthur is even born. And so it has to do with what I'm assuming is King Arthur's grandfather. I'm not 100% certain on that yet because I haven't progressed enough in this series to know. So it starts off shortly before the fall of Rome. And the thing that I find interesting about this book is that he has taken the mythology of Atlantis and the mythology of King Arthur and Britain and Rome and melded them together into one book. So this book starts out having two parallel plot lines and characters. One is Cheris. She resides in Atlantis shortly before Atlantis is lost. And the other one is Taliesin, who is residing in England around the time of the Roman occupation. So I thought that it was kind of cool how he combined those two stories and mythologies and it made for a really interesting story. I will say that his writing is not the best. I've definitely read better written books, but I still found it really engaging and enjoyable. It's that classic 80s fantasy that I like, so it's kind of like that weird comfort fantasy where you know you're not going to get the best written book, but you still find it rather enjoyable. So that part I really liked. I did end up picking up book two, Merlin which I read half of it as well, um, and then I DNF'd it. I may go back to it. I will probably end up picking it up again one day because I really want to give this series a shot, but he kind of lost me halfway through Merlin because I noticed in this book and a little bit in the second book, Merlin, uh, inconsistency in his story. So the way he would describe characters is inconsistent. Um, for example, Cheris' father in Atlantis when they were still residing there, was shown as young, having dark hair, probably in his 30s. And then you fast forward about 40 years and he's still being described as young and dark haired. And I'm like, well, unless the man is magic, which we know he's not, how the hell does this 80 year old man have dark hair and no wrinkles? So like, it was just inconsistencies such as that that kind of bothered me. The other thing I don't really care for is that halfway through his books, he switches narration style. So 
I noticed he did it in this one, he did it in Merlin. I don't know how the other books are yet because I haven't finished the series clearly, but halfway through the book, he fast forwards a bunch of years and then his entire narration style changes. And it worked okay for this one, but it did not work in Merlin. And that was when I started to get annoyed and I put it down. So it was, I, didn't, I was starting to feel frustrated and I had other books I wanted to read. So I may end up picking up Merlin again, but for right now I'm just gonna let it go. But this one, I, the first one I did actually enjoy. It starts off a little slow, but it definitely picks up. So I ended up reading this book a three out of five stars. I rated the plot three and a half out of five stars the characters I rated three stars the writing I gave two and a half out of five stars and the world building I gave four stars because he actually did a really great world building describing Atlantis and the Roman occupied UK like it was just done really well so I gave this book an overall rating of three and a half out of five stars and I really want to try and continue on at some point because I absolutely love King Arthur retellings. The final book that I'm going to share with you guys though it was my other four star book was probably still my favorite book that I read over the past couple of months and that is Tyrant's Throne by Sebastian de Castell the final book in the Great Coat series. I'm so sad it's over. I miss these guys. I love the Great Coats so much. And as you guys know, I've described this series before, but it's basically like a combination of the Three Musketeers with the lies of Locke Lamora, and it's epic and I love it. So this is like the culmination of the story. I don't want to go too much into the plot because a lot of things happen over the course of these books, but suffice it to say, I really enjoyed it. It was a solid ending for the series. It was not my favorite book in the series, but it was a solid ending and I really enjoyed it and I'm going to miss these boys. In the end of the book, he did say, Falcio, Brest, and Casti may return one day so I'm hoping that will in fact be the case because I love it so much plus it matches my hair so it was meant to be. <laughs> so I ended up giving this book an overall rating of four stars. I gave the writing four and a half out of five stars. I gave the characters four and a half out of five stars. I gave the plot four stars and I gave the world building four stars for an overall rating of four four and a half stars. So it was kind of hovering around between those four star ratings for me but I really enjoyed it and I, I can I hope he's gonna continue to write because I really really enjoy his books. His books have a really great mixture of humor and action-packed moments and sad moments like it just all together it's a well-rounded story and I really really enjoyed it immensely. Alright guys that is my rather long-winded wrap-up for the books that I read in April and May. If you guys stuck around to the end congrats because I have a feeling this is gonna be a long video but there you go, that's what I read. It's not as much as I wanted to read. I've definitely become such a slow reader, primarily because I spend way too much time on social media, so I really need to cut back on that. The struggle is real. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys all have a lovely day. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.